Hi, welcome back to another deep dive, number 18 now, and we're going to go through my off-road collection from the 2023 Garage Tour in a bit of detail, including crew colours, etc. And of course, if you've not seen that full tour, then please do look that up. I shall have it linked below and at the end. The car you're seeing now will be the first car of the tour. It's also one of my favourite cars in the game, but apologies, it's some old footage, so the car looks a bit different. Anyway, let's crack on with the Aerial Nomad. Aerial are a small manufacturer based in the UK and they make the Aerial Atom which is essentially scaffolding and a fast Honda engine and it's an extremely raw road car perhaps better suited to track. They also make the Nomad which is the Atom but raised up on knobbly tyres for off-road use and I think more suitable for parts of the world that aren't the UK, parts of the world that actually have spare land that nobody minds you driving on. Well. They have also made the Nomad R, and this was a last of the line Nomad. They were supposed to make five, but I was very lucky to have a factory visit where they told us they actually ended up making seven Nomad Rs. This is the last one. And the Nomad R is a Nomad for mainly road use, but it's not an Atom, so slightly confusing, but I think the idea is it's a little bit more comfortable. Anyway, one of my absolute favorites in the game, the review that I took the footage from is linked below something that is well worth picking up, unlike the next car. And that is, of course, the local motors rally fighter in real life, or the uh, brawler in game. It just doesn't drive very well. And from what I remember, it doesn't have any brakes in the game. Now in real life, it's something else. It's a sort of six liter V8 chucked into a fairly lightweight, uh, radical looking off-roader. And I suppose it must be enormous fun. They made one in the Gulf livery, so I was able to copy that. I think it looks really good, but I would because I like Gulf colours. You can, of course, also use it to make letters from one of the later Fast and Furious movies, which is how it can be seen in my 2022 garage tour. That said, the car has been discontinued and I wouldn't rush to buy it when it comes back unless you have a very specific build that you want to do. Moving on now to the Evron, based strongly on the Arctic trucks. Toyota Hilux, the AT44, it's been seen on Top Gear on a polar expedition. Really good looking truck, really good looking copy. I don't want to say too much because I do have a full review of it which I will link below, but it is highly recommended. Next we have the Draugr, which is based on what used to be called the Chevy Beast. I think that's a fantastic name, but for some reason they couldn't use it, so it became the Chevrolet off-road concept. I believe this is the best off-roader in the game for off-road racing and I mean it looks really really good, loads of customization. The problem is if you're like me and you want to build real world stuff you're left with only one build for the car which is a bit sad so for 2023 I reimagined it. Effectively I gave the car a PPF wrap, a camouflage wrap just as something different to do with it. Next, the Sanking XL, which is based on a Ford F250 Super Duty. Now, I built mine on the Black Ops edition. You can see the full name above. Now, I don't think if you buy one of these, it makes you some form of super soldier sneaking under enemy lines. You basically buy a truck that's all black with black wheels. There isn't the most massive customization that you can do with this, but at the end of the day, it's a very capable off-road truck that costs almost nothing or can even be stolen. So. I think well worth it for any off-road collection. Uh, the Rune Zaba in real life, the Sherp ATV. Gav, are you watching this? I remember doing a casino heist with Gav and we used this as the escape vehicle to get trade price. It was a very hilarious, very long-winded escape. We did make use of the fact that it can go on water and we finally escaped. Now I had a tenth space available for this off-road collection. And I thought, what can I get? And I thought, well, I get one of those. I've got trade price. Mm -mm. Gav's got trade price. I didn't. So $2.4 million to pop this in here for you all to enjoy. And if that doesn't deserve a click of the like button, I don't know what does. It's pretty horrific to drive. It has basically no purpose in the game as far as I can see. And it has already been sold. Ah, the Camacho. I think everybody's got a Camacho because it's a good looking, incredibly capable off-road vehicle. I think it was one of the best for a long time. It's also very good value for money. Based on the Jeep 715 concept as written above, 
same issue as the Draugr, so the same resolution I gave the car, a camouflage wrap to reimagine it. Now, as it happens, both of those cars this year I put back to standard, but I've just worked even harder on the colour to at least make them different from before. Oh, the Vapid Winky, the uh, Willys MB, or the Willys Jeep, as I think it's better known. Uh, Jeep from the war, of course, still an incredibly popular vehicle. I imagine in real life it's slow and bumpy and not that great, and it's about the same in the game. Now, they have given it enormous visual customization. So you really buy this, you have it delivered to your off-road, maybe military or whatever garage of choice. You then customize it and you just leave it there because there really is no fun in driving it at all. Unlike the can Maverick, which must be enormous fun. Now the picture I'm showing is actually the same vehicle listed above, but from the 2024 listing because the picture I worked from from a year or two before has disappeared from the website. They all look broadly the same, but it's available in tons and tons of different versions, that's all. I think to own one of these and then a big area to be somewhere near your house where you could go blasting round in it without any worries would be so much fun. Uh, the only place I've seen them is on movies. I've seen them, I think, in more than one movie, in fact. Anyway, they are very much fun. Now, the next car, again, I have a full review on, so I don't want to go into too much detail here. But uh, essentially, Lee Keen makes a lot of off-road Porsches and each one is specifically customized for that customer. And this is number five, which of course needed the crew color. I think it came out looking really, really good. And I really recommend the Comet Safari for anybody's Porsche or off-road collection. Moving down into the terabyte garage for the uh, or terabyte, which is based on the Mercedes Zetros 6x6 Expedition vehicle. I went for this orange colour this year based on the one below, which seems to have an enormous snowplow on the front of it. Not a lot more to say, everybody needs a terabyte for the reasons that we know, and we know how strong it is, etc, etc. And lastly, over to the Freak Shop for our Acid Lab, our Brigade which is also a 6x6 Expedition truck, as shown below. I wanted to give mine a bit of visual interest, but I wanted it to be something real world. Well, Prosegur, and I bet I've butchered that pronunciation, a South American company, they have big fleets of different sorts of trucks, especially armoured trucks for moving expensive stuff around, and they're all in this bright yellow colour scheme with a little bit of writing, maybe the odd graphic on the side. So I thought I would take inspiration from their trucks for my armoured truck. I do think that perhaps I should have taken the front ram and stuff off for the garage tour. Perhaps it looks a little daft with it on there. But anyway, I left it on and it came to editing and I thought, oh no, I just can't. I'll, I'll just leave it like that. It looks pretty on top of the mountain. So that's why that is there. Well, that completes my off-road section, and I hope you enjoyed that. For next week, I'm going to take a break from the usual deep dive programming to take my movie garage. Now, my movie garage has 32 vehicles in, and I promise you I will be through the whole thing in no more than 10 minutes. I know you rolled your eyes at this point, but honestly, it is possible. And when you see how we're doing it, you'll realise why we can. I'd really appreciate comments below. Let me know what you thought, if there's any builds on some of these vehicles that you think are better than the ones that I've done. Maybe something I can learn from would be great. I'd also appreciate a like, if only because I had to drive that Willys Jeep from one garage to another. If you like real cars in GTA, of course, please do subscribe. Help build the numbers on this still very small channel. That's all for now, and thank you so much for watching.